Hello, hello, Internet. I'm Effie Wisdom, and today in this video, I'd like to share with you a songwriting exercise for getting more songs done without the pesky need for finicky things like inspiration, ideas, or motivation. Does that sound like something you'd be into? Cool. The game is called Under the Influence. I made it up, and I have used it probably about two dozen times now, and it is working like gangbusters. I, I've churned out a song every time I've tried the exercise. A finished song. So, pretty stoked about that. It's called Under the Influence. It's not a drinking game, but I did figure out a way to turn it into one, which is where you drink every time you finish a song section. But the bad news is, uh, the last song I finished, I don't drink, by the way, so uh, I don't know, but I can remember drinking. And if I took 16 shots, <laughs> which is how many song sections I had in the last song I worked on, I would be hammered. So you drink responsibly if you decide to drink while you make music. Now, Under the Influence is an exercise where you choose a song that you vibe with and you use its core elements to create something all your own without having to be inspired, without having to have an idea of what to write about, Without needing to figure out what chords to use, heck, all you really have to do is show up and have fun being creative. Doesn't that sound like fun? So me and why you should listen to me, I am an avid songwriter. I'm what you would call an obsessed songwriter. I write every single day and I have for seven months straight now. I started the challenge of daily writing in February of this year. It's now September as of the recording of this video. And in those seven months of daily writing, I've turned out 188 written, produced, and recorded songs. I think that's pretty neat. I can't believe it myself. I just found out a couple of weeks ago when I was releasing my second album, I was like taking stock of what other songs I had. And I was like, I'm going to add them all up and see how many there are. <laughs> there were 188. It's kind of ridiculous. I have a full-time job. This is just a hobby for me. So, like, I'm spending a lot of time making music. So, I don't want you to think that this is going to magically increase your output. But if you play the game the way it's intended to be played, it's going to churn out new songs for you each time you play that's my opinion, and that's been my experience. So if that sounds like something you're into, let's get into how to play. What are the things that you need to play? Well, you need to be good at critical listening in the sense that you need to be able to identify where a song section occurs. Meaning, like, the trans like, like you need to be able to notice when it goes from verse to chorus or pre-chorus, as an example. You need to be able to say, okay, I'm listening to this verse, I can hear vocals, I can hear something like a piano, I can hear some kind of bass and some kind of drums. That's what I mean by critical listening. That's about the extent of it. You need to be able to identify what you're hearing and song sections. You need a beginner's level of music theory. That means if I were to show you a chord diagram of a G minor chord, you would know how to use that chord for whatever instrument. That's the basic music theory that you need. You just need to know how to use chords um, and read guitar chord diagrams or piano chord diagrams. Uh, you need the ability to play and write and sequence music, obviously. Uh, this isn't for complete newbies, although I suppose if you are a beginner level, you would still be able to play this game. It would just take you longer. And then finally, you need a basic understanding of song structures. What is a verse? What is a chorus? What is a pre-chorus, a bridge, etc.? Um, you need to understand the purposes they serve. And so does that. So that's the skills you need. What items do you need? Well, I usually just have my phone or a notepad and or my computer. That's that that's what you need. You need a way to make music. So either your DAW or a guitar, a piano, keyboard, you know, whatever. You need a way to make music. You need um, a couple bucks, this is optional, to spend buying the artist's song that you choose because we want a copy that we can put in our DAW so that it makes it easier to map out the song sections on the timeline of our project because we're going to be using the song structure 
as sort of a fill in the blank for our song. So how do you actually play this thing? Well, the first step is really simple. You choose a song. The goal here is to select a song that you vibe with, that's all. I sometimes let friends that share very similar musical tastes choose a song for me, or if I'm having trouble deciding, I'll go find one of my favorite Spotify playlists, hit the shuffle button, and skip around until I vibe with something new. The choice is all yours. Step two, find the song's tempo, key, and chords. We need a few pieces of info about the original song. I just said what they were, the tempo, the key of the song, the chords used in the song. The best place I've found to get this information has been Cordify. They have an iOS and Android mobile app, as well as a website at Cordify.net. There's a link in the description below. Using Cordify, you're going to want to write down the key, tempo, and chords used. If you can't find it on Cordify for some reason, Go look at Ultimate Guitar Tabs, that's the other side I use. And as a note here, we're going to lean pretty heavily on these chords to get us started writing. And they're going to make up the harmonic content of our song. So I do want to say it's not important if the chords that you get when you look up your song are 100% accurate. The only thing that's important is that when you play those chords together, they sound good together. That's all. Step three, go buy and download the song you've chosen. Now this is optional. The step is meant for you to go get the song so that you can map out the song sections in the next step. Now you can do this by ear, by streaming it on repeat. That's not how I do it. That would take me too long and I just want to get to writing. So I'll buy and download an MP3 of the song, usually on Amazon, to get to writing and using the next step. Plus, buying the song gives you a chance to support the artist, and you are vibing with them. You're using them as an influence. You're learning from them. This is awesome. You should give them something in return. So show them some love by buying their album or the song that you've chosen. There is a practical reason for it, and that is step four. Outline the song structure on a piece of paper or in your DAW. I prefer to do it in my DAW. Here's how you do that. All right, so we're going to need a song for this example, and I don't want a copyright strike, so I'm just going to grab something from my SoundCloud page. And I just want to point out, there's my 323 tracks. <laughs> and I was scrolling, trying to figure out a few minutes ago or in a previous take, what song it was that I wanted to use and I just kept scrolling until I got all the way down to February which is when I started my daily writing challenge 188 songs ago and here's the song I picked it's called Alien on Stafford Street it just finished downloading but let me show you really quick like you have to scroll past 188 songs man nobody's ever gonna get the chance to listen to all this and then finally if you scroll for what feels like ever you get back to February, seven months ago, when I wrote Something Wicked, which was the first song of February. I just thought that was so trippy, man. And that's only half, you know, like there's way more songs there. <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to use one of my songs. For you, you're going to go to Cordify, and you're going to type in a song. The other day, I used Fantagram's You Don't Get Me High Anymore. So I've got that session pulled up here on Cordify. The information you want to grab is the song's tempo and the song's key. Now you can tell it's highlighted here in blue because I've transposed it. That will automatically transpose the chords that you get down here, which is the reason I love using this service. Um, that is a premium feature though. It costs like about 40 bucks a year. Next, after you've gotten those two pieces of information, you're going to come down here, select piano, or, I mean, select guitar, ukulele, it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever instrument you want to use. I'm using piano because I'm doing a lot of work in FL Studio's piano roll. And then uh, the most important thing is you're going to click summary. That way it shows you all these chords at once. Otherwise, you get this animated view, which isn't as useful because it shows you the order. And we don't want to know the order that they use the chords in. Okay. So... Looking here, I've got 12 chor uh, 10 chords to choose from. Two are missing from the scale of F minor. There's no G sharp, uh, excuse me, G minor diminished, and there's no A flat. 
major. So I can't use those two keys. Other than that, I've got a couple different voices and it looks like I've got a bar, uh, uh, F minor and an F minor seven. I've got a B, B flat minor and a B flat minor seven and a D flat minor. I'm um, excuse me, a D flat major and a D flat major seven. Then I've got a key from outside the scale. I've got C and then I've got C minor down at the bottom. So those are the chords that I can choose from to fashion my chord progressions. And I don't have to use all the chords. I just have to use, I'm limited to these chords. You can voice these chords however you want. Just make sure that they carry their fundamental harmonics. You know, like you're not changing it from an F minor to an F sus2 or to an F minor 9. You're leaving it an F minor, but you can spread those three voices or five voices out however you want. That's what I'm getting at. So once you've done all that and you've written all this stuff down, it's time to take the song, throw it into your DAW, and outline all of the, the song markers. So I've, I've grabbed my song, The Alien on Safford Street here. I'm going to drop it in this blank project, and then I'm going to add timeline markers by listening critically for changes in the song. For those of you that are new to, listen, to, to, to this type of song analysis, we're just listening for the different sections of the song like verse, chorus, bridge, etc. Hopefully you're going to be able to identify them by name. If not, just say song section or new section or change up here. You know, but I know my song sections, so usually you can start with intro, right? Well, this song is no exception. Let's have a listen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to write that down as an intro. And then it looks like we've got a song change right here around bar eight and nine. And then you're just going to lather, rinse, and repeat the process until you reach the end of your timeline and the end of the song. And when you do, you should have something that looks like this. I say you should have something that looks like this. Yes. So, what do we have that we learned from uh, my song, The Alien on Safford Street, to work from? Well, we know that we're going to have an intro, a verse, a chorus, a verse, a chorus, an outro, and an end. Now, I'm going to go ahead and remove that from my timeline by going to work. <laughs> uh, you could just um, clone arrangements in FL Studio. That's all I did to get so that I can flip back and forth between the reference track and the section where I'm going to do my work. So these are the song sections that I need to fill in. I'm going to start with the verse, let's say. Why don't I load up a project where I've already done that and show you um, how I filled it in uh, from start to finish. How about that? All right, so here I've loaded up my project called Boar. Boar is a song inspired by Fantagram's You Don't Get Me High Anymore. A song that I discovered way back in 2016 and has been in constant rotation here in my art studio since because it was just so vibey. I added it to my playlist and never wanted to take it off. And six years later, I'm still listening to it. So I was like, I want to create a song that, that has that sort of vibe that You Don't Get Me High Anymore has. This sort of crazed... Uh, adventure of a song and uh, so I wrote bore and the way that I wrote it is by playing under the influence so the first step was to map out the timeline and you can see the timeline markers along the top and it may look daunting when you do this the first time and you see so many song sections but don't worry I'm gonna teach you how to start right now so once you've got all your timeline marker uh, song section notes on your timeline 
you want to find the section of the song that gets you the biggest win first. What do I mean by that? Well, in this particular case, Fantagram's You Don't Get Me High Anymore, which is on my reference tab here, has the same drums in the intro that it has in the verse, that it has in the chorus, throughout this whole section here with the exception of the pre-choruses. So by tackling a section, one of those sections first, I'm going to write drums for most of the song, so I know that. Next, I was like, what other elements are repeated throughout the song, if any? And the bass line I found from the intro was the same as the bass line in the chorus. So I was like, okay, that's, that's cool. That means if I knock out the intro or the chorus first, I get two sections for the price of one. And I want that big win at the beginning. And almost every popular song, uh, when I say popular song, I mean songs that are in popular time signatures uh, that follow pop-minded song structures are going to uh, make this fairly easy on you. So you're going to want to choose a section that repeats itself so that you get that big win, that sense of accomplishment that's going to boost your confidence and your energy as you go into the other sections of the song because with each section that you complete, you're going to be getting closer and closer to a finished project and all you're doing is filling in the blanks basically for each instrument in each section. So let's jump back over and I'll show you how that worked out for me in this project. I started with the intro because like I said, it bought me the most mileage. It got me the drums for almost the entire song and it got me the bass line for both the intro and the chorus all in one fell swoop. So I started with the bass line because to me the bass is the hook of the song. The drums are amazing but they're fairly static. It's a loop. So uh, anyways, the bass sounds something like this. A little harsh I should have warned you I do apologize don't worry I won't be playing it again on its own here's what it sounds like with the drums The drums were really easy to write. Here's why. This is a dancey trap. That means the, the snare is 99% of the time going to be on the two of the four. Maybe not 90% of the time, but I think you take my point. It's very common for the snare in a dance track to be on the two and the four. So I listened to Fantagram's drums. Sure enough, the snare was on the two and the four. So what I did is I went and I found a drum loop that I really liked from Butch Vig Drums and used that. Okay. That's how I did the drums. I, I just strung together two drum loops that I liked and uh, slapped them into my timeline like that. The combination of the drums and the bass started to make me feel inspired. And at that point, I had the confidence because I knew that I'd just finished the elements in the intro and the chorus the main elements that you hear, if you listen to Fantagrams, you don't get me high anymore, are just drums and bass, man. So when I finished the drums, I was done with two sections of the song and most of the song's drums, except for what I wanted to add on top of that, because this is a very minimal electronic track that we're emulating, trying to be as good as. Uh, next, I moved on and did the bass line for the verse because it's the same bass patch and it buys me two sections. If I finish the bass line for the verse, I get verse two's bass line finished. See what I'm saying? So I get another big win. I've completed another song section that gets me another song section finished. Next, I went and I did the bass line, which is a different bass patch for the pre-chorus because the pre-chorus is pretty much Oh, let me play you what the verse sounds like. I'm just trying to be respectful of your time. Mm -hmm. 
And the reason I, I wrote that rhythm wasn't uh, because I was being particularly creative or inspired. It's because I heard stabs in the Fantagram song. And I was like, okay, so I'm going to take a nod from them. They're going to do bass stabs that worked for them. I'm going to do bass stabs. And I just turned it into a, a, a more melodic thing, I think, than they did perhaps in their verse. And then in the pre-chorus, the same principle applies. I, I listened to the sound selection of the bass sound that they were using, found something comparable that I liked for my song. And then I played out a rhythm that sort of had the same energy and, and vibe, but was mine, you know? And it sounds like this. And then the drums for the pre-chorus were really simple. It's just a kick drum. And that little snare fill is just four quick hits on the snare at the end. Very low effort, very low effort. And another song section down. And that bought me two song sections almost because the second pre-chorus and the last pre-chorus uh, both use that same bass line. So that means I get to copy paste that and I get another win. And that makes me want to keep going even more. So then I moved on to the next pre-chorus and did its drums. Those drums and that bass together sound like this. got lost in the sauce there I do apologize so that finished up the pre-chorus and that bought me the drums for the last pre-chorus because the last pre-chorus is half empty space half of those drums and then that had my drums mapped out for the entire song right there I had already finished writing the instrumentation for one whole instrument in less than 45 minutes when I was doing this uh, because I was leaning heavily on Fantagram to tell me what to do. I hope that makes sense. And these drums sound nothing like their drums. They just share some things in common. There was a cymbal swell that I added as well while I was going along. And uh, that's what you see right here. I heard some chords also in the pre-chorus, so I added some chords. They sound like this. And I did that because, again, I heard something similar in Fantagram's song. This sounds nothing like the sound that they used. It's just I needed something to play chords, and that seemed to fit with the the sort of harsher vibe that my song has. Then I needed uh, some guitar because there's some guitar sprinkled throughout the song. And that's when I started to get inspired and things started to uh, start moving in a faster clip. So I added guitar to the chorus and was like, man, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep adding guitar everywhere. So at this point, I became inspired. And I was no longer leaning into Fantagram. I was sort of leaning back and just appreciating what I had from their song that had influenced mine. And now I'm creating on my own at this point. Uh, the only other thing that I added that was a direct influence from Fantagram's song was this additional set of chords during the pre-chorus that you see here, during the build and the pre-chorus. There's an E piano during the build. That's the last section that I had to write. So I hadn't moved on to guitar yet. Uh, I had to write the build section because uh, it had an E piano sound. That sounds like this. I So 
those chords uh, were for the build, and I was like, they're the same chords as the pre-chorus, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and decide that I'm going to also use them in the pre-chorus, so I added them to the pre-choruses here and here. But not this second pre-chorus. I don't know why. Uh, and then back at the beginning, um, before I moved on to guitar, I also forgot I had gone in and added the little riser that you hear at the beginning of Fantagram's song. I added my own version. It sounds like this. And so that's, in a nutshell, how you play the game and you get to a point where you're just creating is you're just going through and you're filling out a song section by section, instrument by instrument. You're remaining focused long enough to get one instrument done and then you move on to the next one in that section, remain focused until you get that instrument done, then move on to the next one in that section. Once you do that, take a look at the rest of your song and see if those are used anywhere else in your reference material or if there's an opportunity that you would like to take to reuse those somewhere else in your song because that's okay to diverge that early. The point is to get these song sections filled out so that we can get to what I consider the most fun part, which is writing lyrics. So uh, I have a little bit of a hack for that. This video is getting lengthy, so I'll keep it as short as possible. When you get done writing the track, then think about lyrics. Don't try and write your lyrics as you're writing your music because then you may get discouraged because you're not having ideas. So uh, I always say write the music first, let the words come later because you want the words to be informed by the rise and fall of the song in my opinion. I really like that style of songwriting where you're letting your uh, melodic decisions in your lyrics be made by the rise and fall of the music that's already been created. And, and that's just a little bit of a rant. But uh, what you want to do is you want to analyze the lyrics of the song for theme. And you want to say, okay, what's the theme of this song? And in the case of Boar here, my song, uh, looking at Fantagram's You Don't Get Me High Anymore, it, it's sort of like a... I can't say for sure what it's about. I can tell you what it's about to me, which is about frustration with your vices because they're not doing it for you. And so you're starting to act out and you're starting to be even crazier than, than you normally would be because your vices aren't getting you off anymore. That's what the song means to me. And so uh, for my song, I kept a similar vibe. I talked about being stir crazy and how uh, the vices that I might use to deal with that aren't working anymore. Sounds pr pretty familiar, doesn't it? That's because I borrowed the theme from You Don't Get Me High Anymore. I didn't borrow any lyrics. I just borrowed that theme because it was something that I could really vibe with and relate to. It's what connected me to the song in the first place. And... Uh, so all that being said, how are you feeling? Do you feel like you know how to play under the influence? Does it still sound fun? Is it something that you're going to go do after this video? If you create something, please let me know by coming back with a link and dropping it in the comments. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer any of them you have. I'm going to be adding a PDF description, uh, a PDF to the crib notes of how to play this game in the description below so that you can follow along that way when you're playing on your own later. I hope you got a lot out of this. Please hit that like button if you did. Hit the subscribe button if you wanna be notified when I make future videos, which I will be doing because I am addicted to playing this game and it's a lot of fun. I'll see you in the next video.